Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, aka Barnacles. And today I was thinking, man, 3D printed stuff is really cool. You guys like it. I like it. You can print really cool stuff. Even got like a drink coasters printed. Um, it's pretty much infinite possibilities. So I was thinking to myself, I was like, man, what could be better than owning a 3D printer? Owning two 3D printers. Well guys, here it is. It's my Robo 3D printer. Now, I lucked out because I have a friend that was a Kickstarter backer on this project and he just recently received the printer, called me up and asked me if I'd be interested in buying it because he needed the money for another project more than he needed the 3D printer. So, of course, I took the opportunity and acquired it. So now we're gonna unbox it and take a look at it right now. Well guys, you gotta admit, this is one hell of a cool box. Um, and actually, I can't wait to see what's inside of it. It's got some cool, you know, specs and stuff printed on the side here and some cool graphics. It actually looks like something, so a high-end product you'd see on the shelves in a store, and I think that that's really cool. So let's go ahead and open this thing up. I got my dental pick, which we all know is the preferred method of opening boxes, <laughs> mainly if you're lazy. So let's go ahead and flap under there. Okay, so the first thing we have here is... Taped on the top, it says, well, first off, this is a choking hazard, so please, if you're under three years old, do not handle this product. Okay, before plugging in your Robo 3D printer, make sure the voltage selector on the back of the unit is set correctly for your region. So it looks like it supports 115 volt and 230 volt. So this thing's set up for anybody's power. It says the unit contains small parts to keep away from children. Do not tamper with electronics or, or wiring or it'll avoid the 30-day warranty. Noted. Um, it encourages us to go look at the getting started guide, which we will do. And please watch the get starting troubleshooting video at this site. Make sure you remove any foam packing from the inside of your printer before use. Cool. So, you know, hey, those are all pretty standard things. And then we have the starting guide. This is actually cool. It comes with like a guide that has like a full color logo on the front of it. Talking about the printer itself and the software and operations. This is actually, this is actually pretty cool. I mean, I like it. So far, it's like it's packaged like a real, you know, really, really professional printer. And I like that. That's, that's actually really, really cool. So let's go ahead and take the foam off. Here we have the printer inside. And uh, let's see, what is this? Oh, hey, check that out. Haha. -ha. T-shirts. I love T-shirts. Awesome. That's going on later. Um, let's see, we have a tool. It looks like here, it looks like a little little plastic screwdriver. And then we got the meat and potatoes, which is the printer itself. Let's go ahead and pull this out of here. This sucker is pretty big. Okay. Go ahead and move this out of the way. Um, looks like the whole thing is packed in foam. We've got some sample material. That's cool. Got a power cable. Uh, looks to be a USB cable for plugging it in. And now I think we just got to remove all the foam. Oh, another tool got loose. I think what happened was in transport, this got opened up. I think this actually held all the tools. Um, so, damn you FedEx, you bastards. All right, so let's go ahead and throw that over there. Got some more foam over on this side. Okay. That just came out. Is there anything in there of interest? Oh, we got a bag on the top here. Oh, here's the other half. I found it. Found the other half of the container that held the tools and stuff. At least I suspect it did. And not quite sure what we have here. This is... Uh, all right, honestly, I have no idea. Whoa, it's already trying to break stuff. I have no idea what this is. It looks like an acrylic cylinder that's threaded. We'll have to do some research on that. Um, that's garbage. All right, and of course, we got the foam here on the bottom. Oh, this came off. Huh. This looks like... Uh, oh, it's just got the, it's got the logo on. It's like a side plate that you can put on there so you can run the printer sideways, and people still know what it is. Oh, we found another tool. And another screw right here. So, so far we've got a couple different Allen keys. Got a couple extra screws. 
and they all came sealed in this case but it just came it just came apart in transport all right so let's get rid of the foam there and here is the printer and it looks like we've got more foam down under the build platform all right let's turn it around looks like we have some more foam under here Well, I must say it's packed really well. I mean, it, it, it was really packed decently. And uh, that I definitely appreciate. So here we go. Here's the printer. Let's go ahead and put it back up on the desk and take a closer look at it. All right, so here we've got the printer out of the box. And I noticed that it works a lot different than the Ultimaker does. Like for instance, the Ultimaker, the print head moves, does all the movement and the platform just moves up and down. This is actually kind of opposite. The platform itself moves you can see the platform goes back and forth and the print head moves up and down and left and right. So it, you know, that, that no doubt attributes to some of the speed because of course, you know, you have a lot more weight and a lot more stuff to move around. So you can't quite go as fast. Um, the other thing that's cool is this has a heated build platform, which is something new and I haven't used before. So I'm really excited about that. And I also noticed that the extruder here on the top, looks like it feeds the filament right from the print head. Whereas on the Ultimaker, the, it actually feeds the filament off the print head to it. Uh, so it's, it, it's, it's really a completely different design. So I'm excited to see how it works. Um, but the build quality looks cool. I mean, it's, it's, it's a giant uh, piece of plastic that's all formed that has the logo and everything on it. And that's pretty cool. And it feels, I mean, it feels solid. It doesn't feel like cheap plastic at all and if you flip it over you have the power supply right here and all the motors and the brain and all that stuff and it actually looks like it's pretty tidy how it's put together <laughs> the print I, ju I just sent the print head to the top of the thing and it looks like the print head moves up and down using these worm drives here and it looks like each one's connected the stepper motor from both sides and then these are this moved back and forth with a belt it's actually it's it's a really unique design now the first thing i'll notice is it does have a pretty big footprint um compared to the ultimaker because you do have to have enough clearance for this to come out about four or five inches out of both sides which honestly isn't too bad um but the wiring and everything on it looks clean and honestly it's one of those things where, I mean, if, if speed isn't a huge concern to you, um, something like this, I mean, should be a good alternative because you save a lot of money going this route. Uh, but you just, the, but really the only thing you're losing is maybe some speed and maybe a little detail, but that's yet to be determined. So we'll have to hook it up and try it out and we'll do that in the next couple of videos. But I just wanted to get this thing unboxed and have a look at it because I was just antsy tonight. I had to see it, guys. So uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments about the look of this. I'm still trying to figure out where some of the stuff goes. Like, for instance, this acrylic rod. I have no idea what this is for. <laughs> so I'm going to have to send them an email and ask them about this. If you guys know what this acrylic rod is for, would you please let me know? And I thought this was pretty cool, too, because now you can see it's a Robo 3D. And either way, if you place it that way or if you spin it around and place it that way, you know it's a Robo 3D, which I think is kind of cool. All right, let's have a little bit of a closer look here so you guys can see what's going on in here. I, I really like it so far. So the true test will be hooking it up and trying it. So hopefully tomorrow I can get it hooked up and print a pumpkin or something. But I did run into one slight problem, and that is I bought the printer from my friend, but all it came with, with it was a roll of sample filament. And it's not enough to really print anything big, so I'm going to have to find a way to get a hold of some filament for this guy because it doesn't use the same size filament as the Ultimaker. So, but don't worry guys, I'm resourceful. I'll figure something out. Hey guys, I was able to figure out what that acrylic rod was for after all. Check that out. It actually screwed onto that plate and that's for uh, holding your spool. That's pretty cool, so you can put the spool on either side. All right, and there it is sitting right next to the Ultimaker. You can see the Ultimaker has quite a bit smaller footprint. Um, but luckily, my bench actually clears the wall nice, so I'm going to set that right there and put the spool on the side. And uh, that's going to work really cool. So that is a cool sight right there, guys. That is cool. So keep an eye out for future videos. I'll be testing out the Robo 3D over the next couple days. 
Um, and I'll also be installing the dual extrusion kit on the Ultimaker. So lots more 3D in the future, guys. So keep an eye out. Hope this video gave you an ergasm. If it didn't, check your pulse. All right, take it easy, guys, and until next time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.